All right. Welcome to uh, part 29 or 30 or whatever it is. Look at the camera. This is the uh, this is the will and run video. It's also got uh, I think some more hood restoration, some other bits and pieces. But basically, this is the one that uh, we try to start the engine and see if it'll actually run after 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. I don't know when this engine was run last. I had had clean oil in it, but it wasn't really complete. I uh, didn't have a carburetor, so I bought a carb electron distributor. But uh, this is the video. We'll see if it runs or not. So uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned to see more. Uh, I'll just leave it at that. So let's get into the video. If you want to skip to the will it run part, I think it's about 15 minutes in. We're actually crank it. There's, I think, the new battery and some other little stuff before. It's not right at the beginning. But uh, thanks for watching. So these four millimeter bolts with Phillips head are perfect because now one screwdriver takes them both out. Just took this out and put it back in while the bulbs had fallen out somehow during our install. So now if I put on the lights, I've already checked. Our four illumination lights work. And let's see. So that's four bulbs. I think there's nine in there. Turn signals take a second. So that's six, right? Six bulbs are good. Turn the ignition on. Oh, oh, oh Jesus, what was that? I think those are the wipers. I just hooked up another wire. So what did I say? Four plus two, seven. So that's seven out of nine. So that would be eight. What would be the other light? Oh, high beam indicator. Okay. Hi oh, where's the high beam? High beam. Oh, it's on the switch. Oh, that doesn't work. I don't know if that's hooked up yet. Okay, so that must be the ninth bulb. The blue light for the high beam, I'm assuming. So the oil light doesn't work. And uh, the high beam. So I got seven out of nine. That's pretty cool. Turn the key off. I just heard, I think the wipers. Oh, I heard something. I made a noise before. That's wipers, right? Maybe it's that other blue. And the only wire I haven't hooked up yet is the blue white, which I think was for the choking stuff. Oh well. So seven of nine bulbs confirm working. Ah, that's good. And one of the hazards. Let's see. The turn signals still. Well, let's see if the turn signals work. Let's see. Nope. Oh. Oh, I can hear it. This is the clicker right here. Oh, maybe this thing's backwards. Oh, maybe I don't have a ground hook. I don't have any grounds really hooked up in the dash. That's probably what it is. Oh my god. Oh, the wipers are going. Where were the wipers work that time? Oh, are they supposed to do that? That's annoying. Oh, they're whacking stuff back there. Hey, the wipers work. Jeez, that scared me. Probably the first time in 50 years those things are in. Okay. Put the lights on at the same time. Oh, Ooh, not enough power for the wipers. Yeah, not a, I only have a five amp power supply. <laughs> oh, cool. So wipers work. Well, that was terrifying. Okay, I've got the brake lights working, at least on this side. The only thing left is the reverse light to test. He's the I got the hazards working. So all the lights on the back of the truck are working except for the reverse lights. And that's just because I haven't crawled under there and hooked up the reverse lights. Oh, and this marker light. I haven't hooked that one up. That's the last marker light. All the other marker lights work, even the license plate. So yeah, reverse lights and left corner. There we go, I just installed the uh, steering column. Get better lighting here. Steering column cover. First time. I saw a dome light. You can see I have painted my thing red. And uh, actually, I got the oil light working, but it's disconnected right now. I just hooked up the ground. And uh, I've got the steering column cover on. Never put that on. It's actually nut and bolt, it's not screws like all the newer trucks. Interesting. 
But yeah, I'm uh, pretty close to the dash. I don't think I can go any more forward with the steering wheel. This seat is probably a little fatter than it needs to be. So uh, I gotta go back. All right, the next step to rebuilding the doors is put the regulators back in. And uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just putting some wheel bearing grease. I wiped out the old grease. Just putting some a little bit around that joint. And on this one, I packed this bearing. I just wiped off all the old grease and just packed it in there. I try to get a little in there, and then I packed it all in here. So as it turns, it'll just suck it in. And see that it's metal to metal. So uh, put a little grease on here. Just to make sure there's no more metal to metal. So, uh, and I did label this one left. I just put in the right one, and the right one did say RR. Uh, I'm assuming this one will say L on it somewhere. But there was an RR on the other one. If this one says left, I don't see it, so I'm glad I did label that left side. I don't see any other markings. I see an O four three oh oh wait is that an L H looks like yeah L H there is an L H left hand okay cool so they are marked oh the other one I think said I thought I said R R I think it said R H okay my bad so cool I am putting them back on the right side the correct side <laughs> they are labeled okay so I just installed both regulators what I when I say installed I mean I put them in this hole. I'm just laying them down there on the floor because I think that's the trick I noticed. Putting them down the floor, I'm going to put the quarter glass in, bolt that in. Oh, no, actually, I'm sorry, put the glass in next, put the glass in second, put it down on the floor, don't put it in this bracket, then put in the quarter glass. Then I can put the regulator in, and then I'll lift the glass up, put it on the regulator, and then I can put this bracket in last. And then this bolt was for the lock, oh, the lock assembly. That goes underneath the, I gotta figure out what point that goes in. Stay tuned. As you can see, I've already tinted the rear window before I installed it. I don't know if it's perfect, but it's pretty good. Front windshield had a tint on it from the brand new. I just tinted the uh, left window, so that'd be the, the left side. Now I gotta go do the other one. So the plan is to tint all five windows, one, two, three, four, five, before and installing them, and then another you know, windshield. So there's six windows. All right, here's the hood after a little bit of sanding, not much. And I even got rid of the, I just put a coat of primer on the bottom because I spent a lot of time de-rusting it all. There's a lot of bare metal and cleaning it with acetone and sandpaper and scraping it. And, uh, it needs a lot more work, but uh, I just don't like all the bare metal, so I'm just throwing some primer on all the bare metal. I think every single one of these little spots, I'm just sanded this thing, is actually bare metal, the original paint that chipped down. So I just sanded this with 80 grit and got rid of a lot of junk and dirt, a lot of weird stains. That's why I just threw on some primer. So uh, I'm going to sand it all again and primer it again. Before I put on the uh, super color primer. Here's the original windshield washer squirter. It's all aluminum with like a brass nut. Unfortunately one of these little nipples was missing and one broke. I was trying to take this off. It did not want to unscrew and it looks like the threads kind of came off. I may be able to retap it. I'd love to be able to clean this up and put it back on just because it's all aluminum. It's cool. Be too easy to just put on a plastic modern day washer nozzle but it's gonna be a lot of work to fix this thing and I don't have one of these metal jets looks like the hole goes sideways see the hole out of the side I don't know if I can find one of those one was broken now I broke that one so I don't know if I could fix that I don't know probably just put a plastic one for now until I can figure out if I can Find another one of these, but it was hard to get off. That bronze didn't want to come off the aluminum. 
So, and I also got the trim off. As you saw, I cleaned it. I just did a little cleaning on it. It's got a lot. Got rid of a lot of the uh, rust or something it was on. So it's got one. Just a few minutes of cleaning. Obviously, it needs to be cleaned further, but that's the inside. It's in great shape. Okay, so I just got both glasses in. It's tricky. So the trick is, you can put this latch in. That's fine. I thought that had to be out. I got the door handle on, you know, the outside latch on, this latch on. So before you put this quarter round in, you gotta put the window in and put it all the way up against this wall in the track. And it's gotta be perfectly square. If it's just a little bit crooked, it won't go in very easily. And then you put this in on a 45 degree angle and then you gotta look down the slot and put that slot, put this on the glass as you go back down in. Then everything goes together, nothing's bolted. Now the problem is I gotta raise the glass up, put on the stopper and then the regulator's down here in the corner. It's not bolted in, bolts in right here, just sitting in there. Cause you put the regulator in here, remember? So you gotta put that in before you take the glass before you put the glass in, you put the regulator in, but you just put it in the corner. So now, that's how I actually bought the truck. The regulator was in the corner and the glass was all together. But, uh, so now I gotta take it apart again, take this out, take the glass out. I have to put some tape or some string around it because I can't put the glass up <laughs> to lift it up. It's kind of hard to lift up, so I'm gonna have to put string around it or something so I can lift the glass. I can get my hand in that hole, but I can't really lift the glass. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and order the new felts and put the felts in before I get any further so I got both sides I just got them back together that was tricky but I'm gonna order the new felt and then put those in all right here's my uh, finished auto spring I don't know if I ever showed this but I just drilled a hole so I put a put a bolt in the throttle linkage I don't know if you can see it right there, I just put a bolt through right above the pivot point, right on the pull point. It seems to work really good, I'll show you in a second. Okay, so here's my finished throttle setup, version 1. So if I hit the throttle, it snaps right back. So I just got a little spring, I don't know if you can see that. A little spring, got a hole in there, and I've got a bolt, I added an extra hole to this Original linkage. It's just just a little tension, not a lot. Don't want too much. It's gonna put this one, but that seems a little too big. So we'll try that out and see how that works. I also found a vacuum port on here. I don't need, so I plug that. So I got one vacuum hose, one vacuum line, one plug. I still need to order a PCB hose that goes here. It's like 32 bucks. Uh, finally found one. I was looking forever. I bought last time I bought one. I bought at the dealer. Like like eight bucks or something. So I finally bought a battery. And uh, I need to get rid of this controller that was installed in 1984. The uh, voltage regulator. Because it wants to be in the same place. But my new relocated battery thing. Um, it's not working so good. Oh, is it hitting the fender? I think this bolt's too long. It fits, but I uh, could fit better. I need to make a hold down clamp now. But I got a Type 26. I did a lot of research. I was going to buy like a 58. It was real small. But I found this one. And uh, it's the perfect size. I can still get to everything here. The old battery was here, which was annoying me. Now I'm real close to the battery. Fuse box, I mean. Let's hook this up and see if anything works. I uh, just checked the timing, I cranked it over, took the plugs out. I got a hundred and uh, what is that, 30, 40? That's like 135, 135 and number four. 135 and number four, that's different. So I only got 30 to 50 on the first one, 120 on the second two, 135 on the last one. So I'm hoping the valves are out of adjustment or something on the first one. It's pretty low. Okay, I've been cranking it over. I got a gallon of gas in the tank. I just noticed there's some crud in here. 
I've got all the cylinders out. I mean, the plugs out. I got the coil disconnected. Got that thing propped open. I was hoping this pump would work and it would pump some gas out of the tank. I've been cranking it over a little bit. I just did a compression test. It was like 30, 120, 120, 135. The first cylinder is pretty low. I did clean up these plugs, one of these plugs a while ago. They're pretty nasty. They're all covered in paint. I remember cleaning the paint off one of them. They don't look worn out, but they look pretty dirty. Probably buy some new ones, but I think I can make a run on these, I hope. So I'm waiting for a new coil, a 3 ohm coil to come. This is like a 2 ohm, which is supposedly the wrong one. Um, I did plug it in for a second, I crank it for a second, and I saw a spark. I've got a uh, idiot light through here, and I did see spark. So it does technically work. That's supposed to be too much amp, so I'll wait till I get the right coil. I need to put another coat, but I put one coat of paint on the glove box, sat in black last night. And then the sprinklers ran on it, and I put another coat on here, and the sprinklers ran on it. And it does need another coat. But uh, it's a lot better than all scratched up. I'll do another coat on that. All right, since I only have 30 PSI, 40 PSI on this one, just went ahead and put some uh, ATF on the cylinder. And I'm putting all the plugs back in, and I'm going to crank it over. Actually, I'll probably, uh, probably should have checked the pressure again. I'll check the pressure one more time on this one. Well, now I got 240 PSI. That's crazy. All I did was put some oil in there. So I guess it is the rings that are stuck. Crazy. Never done that before. Um, by the way, I finally got the correct coil. So all these coils I got. A truck came with that coil. Came with that coil. This is a 3 ohm coil. These are 2 ohm coils, so these are useless. And I got another bracket too. I got 3 brackets. So I can now finally try to start it with the right coil. So this is for a 1970 Volkswagen Beetle 1600. All the dots and stuff use 2 ohms. The VWs use 3 ohm. That's what I need. For this electronic distributor I read. Alright, so let's see what I'll start. I just put the plugs in. I got a wrench in there. Let's see. I don't think the fuel pump works. Need some gasoline. Oh, I got some carb stuff. Spark before. I'm gonna be able to see this somehow. I am getting a spark. So that's good. Now I need to check the timing. Seems like it tried to fire. I need to check the timing on this thing. To the right. Okay, stop, stop. Okay, I think it's... I saw what I think I saw. Hey, hold on, it's, the timing's off. Can't see a thing down here. Um... Wait a Did I hold the button or not? Could do it again? Oh, hold on, stop, stop. Okay, hold on. Okay, there's the marks. Now this light's so bright I can't see the other light. So I need off timing, so I need to go retarded or advanced, one or the other. Okay. 
Again. Oh, okay, that's close. Okay, so that's, um, okay, now we're in the range. Okay, try it again. Okay, stop, stop, stop. Like it's there. Yeah. It's got no gas. The, um, well, it's not, it's got dirt coming out of the tank. I put a gallon in the tank and I sprayed some down here. So hold on, let me, uh, okay, crank it. Sucking gas. I don't know if the fuel pump's working. Uh, well, that might be a problem. It's probably rotted out. They actually make a rebuild kit for these for like 10 bucks, 20 bucks. Just a rubber diaphragm. It's just a little diaphragm. For the fuel pump? Yeah, but you can go to Brandon. Brandon, fuel pump. That. It's like 20 bucks for a new one. Okay, but we can afford that then. So the pumps. I mean, I put a gallon in there like a month ago. Oh, well, maybe evaporate in that. Pour some gas around the car, but it should actually run off. There's a float bowl in here. I don't know if the gas is in there or not. I'm feeling like I'm, I'm dying of fumes in here. Yeah, let me, uh... Can I get out? Yeah. Turn the key off. Is the little idiot light off? Yes. It's all the way to the left. You no. Check? It's actually weird. It's actually like How's American it? stuff. So... How is it off? Let, that's accessory. That's oh. off. That's on. <laughs> so the light goes off. Is that a light? I've got a, I've got a switch coming to make that light come on. Well, the timing marks are close, so we're close on the timing. It sounds like it. Sounds okay. like it's about to start. The compression is good, so it should run. I don't know when the last time this came. This could be 10, 40 years old. Ready, Amber? Get down. Like, what the? It's got good compression, so it's got. What are we doing here? I think it has only. I think it only has forty nine thousand miles on. It has one hundred twenty psi. I think it's so. I got. Small. Yeah. Tell me all this dirt is coming off your nice paint job, right? Yeah, this is dirt. I'm trying okay, to come on, Amber. Let's go get. We'll get I got one. Look, one turns into not working. All right, so I'll just let the battery charge. Oh, yeah. oh, let me turn the camera. Since I'm not getting any fuel, I just took the fuel pump apart. I just ordered a new fuel pump, but uh, it's obviously dry in here. I thought this diaphragm would be ripped or something, but it actually looks like it's still in one piece. It's pretty good. So, uh, I don't think this comes off. And I can buy new diaphragms. Yeah, the thing is, I know they usually rip when they get old and dry out with no gas in them. But, uh, looks good.
wants to run. starts if I have it on full throttle. I think I flooded the poor thing. Okay. Well, good job the engine didn't run because I just realized this filter is not the right one and it's puking oil out the bottom of the truck. So I just went and got some cleanup stuff and the only oil filter I could find at Walmart was a uh, Fram, which I stopped using years ago. But I did use it when I was a teenager. But it was the only thing inside the little filter, the computer thing at Walmart. So, I'll just use a Fram for a little while. Man, I haven't bought one of these in I don't know how many years. But I think there's a problem with the filter. Can you see the difference? <laughs> I thought that filter looked a little small. And I haven't been, I haven't put one of these on an L series in a long time. Since like 1989 or something. Alright, so before I change out this fuel pump, where'd it go? Got a brand new fuel pump and filter. I got the new oil filter on. I got the oil pressure switch is gonna be here today. And a new master cylinder. But I just decided to do a uh, little pudding fab trick. Since I got it, I put another gallon in the tank. Just want to make sure this pump is working or not working. I took it apart. It looked okay. It was kind of dry rotted. I mean, tried kind of dry. But I just hooked it up to a bottle of gas and uh, cranked it over, and it already filled the filter up. So that fuel pump is actually still good. So now I got a fuel filter full of gas. So now, in theory, the carb bowl should fill up with gas. Out. I need to fill up the carburetor with gas. Oh yeah, you can see that fuel filter is just pumping away. Oh. It's an old filter. I've got a brand new one, but you can see how good that pump is working. Fill this carb up. Okay, so now, I don't know. I don't see any gas in the car, I smell it. At least I got... In theory, I should just hook up the choke crank it over but I want this full bowl to fill up with gas it's brand new it's empty it's bone dry I poured a bunch of gas in yesterday I try starting with the gas filling no idle it's like a vacuum leak or something there's no idle at all I have to give it a little bit of gas so I played around with air screw screw yesterday the engine does run yay so it sounded pretty good actually except for the exhaust leak because I haven't welded it on yet it's not like tack welded to the muffler so I gotta figure out why there's no idle I have to give it a tiny bit of gas 
That means, I think I played around yesterday, I unplugged the vacuum leak and it actually tried to start. So I need more, uh, what do I need, more air at idle or whatever? I don't know. Or it's just cold. Actually, it's just cold. They don't idle cold, do they? The choke. How does this work again? The choke, you apply electricity and it slowly opens up. Is it because I don't have the choke hooked up? Yeah, because one, that's just supposed to open it up when it's warm. Maybe I just need to have it. The choke will basically do that when it warms up. Open up the butterfly. light that light works I don't know if I got no oil pressure because my switch is not hooked up which is not good it'll be here today though <laughs> I gotta hook up the radiator I think <laughs> 